This uh, session is about internet connected TV. My name is Ron Weber. Uh, I'm with Trinet Internet Solutions. We're a digital, a ministry digital uh, firm. We are uh, based in uh, Irvine, uh, not too far uh, south of here, where the five and the 405 come together in South Orange County. We also have offices in Dallas and in uh, also in Washington, D.C., and we work with ministries around the country to help them to use digital media and to use digital, uh, the digital realm to be able to do evangelization, to grow their ministry, and to get the gospel message out. Uh, so I'm excited to uh, be here today to talk to you about a topic which is uh, near and dear to my heart. I'm always interested in new technologies that allow ministries to get the gospel message out, and I'm particularly excited about internet connected TV and uh, in the past few years uh, there's been just a whole uh, range of new options platforms available for ministries to get their message out uh, today I'm going to be focusing on a couple of them one is Roku and another one is Yahoo TV or sorry uh, YouTube but I'm also going to touch on some of the other platforms that have come available in the last little while uh, so uh, that's what I want to cover in today's session I always like to open up a session with a scripture and and a uh, prayer, so I, I'd like to start us out on the right foot. I'm gonna share with you out of 1 Peter 1, verse 13, uh, a scripture that says, therefore prepare your minds for action, be self-controlled, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. I like that scripture verse because it just reminds us of delayed gratification. Sometimes, you know, when ministries jump into new platforms, sometimes it's like, hmm, I'm not sure we should jump into this, who's on that platform? And so I like that concept uh, because one of, the, one, of the, one of the things in our society is nobody wants Wants, everybody wants everything instantly, and often investing in these platforms takes time. So, uh, so again, this scripture verse also talks to us personally about being self-controlled and, and controlling our own uh, desires, and, uh, and I like that. It just reminds us that we need to have patience and faithfulness. So let me pray. Father God, we thank you for this scripture verse that just reminds us about uh, just patience and, uh, and, and faithfulness to form us in our character. And Lord, as we uh, look at these technologies, help give us wisdom, Lord, as to how to use them best to get the gospel message out so that, Lord, your will might be done and more people might come to know Jesus uh, through these technologies. Uh, we lift this time up to you and we pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So first of all, uh, a show of hands before I get started. How many of you uh, have heard of like Roku? Okay, a lot of you have heard of it. How many have actually used it? Okay, there's some of you who have. Of course, most people have heard of YouTube, right? Uh, can I see a show of hands? Lots of people use YouTube regularly. Now, how many of you are involved in ministry or using media with ministry? And I see a show of hands there. So, okay, so there's some relevance. This is an important topic, I feel, uh, because I think this concept of internet connected TV is one of the most important things to happen in the ministry arena since really podcasts. Podcasts allowed people to be able to listen to sermons on their time frame using iPods, iPhones. I think this is important as well because it really opens up a whole new avenue of how ministries can get their content out, not just audio content, but video content in a means and a platform in which it's really going to be shown uh, to its best and most effect in its best and most effective way. Uh, some details about myself. Uh, I've been with Trinet now for it's my 12th year at Trinet. Trinet's been in business for 20 years. We have clients ranging from uh, TBN to Focus on the Family, uh, Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And uh, I, have, I have an interesting background. I have a degree in, uh, in civil engineering and also a master's in, in uh, um, uh, business administration from the University of California. I'm originally from Canada. Uh, but my passion is helping ministries with this digital technology help them to be successful. 
So let's talk first about uh, what I want to cover in this. So why internet connected TV? And I use that phrase because there's a lot of platforms out there. Right now it looks like Roku is probably the most popular one and it's the one that is growing the fastest. So uh, it's, it's an important one to focus on. But there's other platforms out there like Apple TV uh, is important. Uh, once, if and when Apple opens up its uh, uh, platform to developers, it's, it's certainly going to grow. And then there's, all, there's what Google is doing, there's Fire TV, so there's a number of them I'm going to touch on. So why internet connect, uh, connected TV? Well, first of all, it adds credibility. Uh, it adds credibility to the ministry because it's, it, it, pro, it allows the ministry and the, the video to be shown on a different platform, provides yet another way, and really to show that video content in the best possible way. It can be a new do donation source, particularly through subscriptions and or ads. You can put place ads into the uh, media stream, or you can even use it as subscriptions. Uh, you know, ministries are talking about using, uh, for example, a Roku channel. You can have, generally, you can have uh, a certain amount of videos available for everyone to watch, and then you can create premium content as well. So there's opportunities for subscriptions and, uh, and some of the models there I'm going to touch on. Um, it certainly is less expensive than cable or satellite, both uh, from the consumer perspective as well as from the, uh, from the ministry perspective. It's a lot less expensive to get a Roku channel and to get your media out on Roku than it is to try to get cable time or satellite time. So that's an important consideration. It reaches new audience. Again, this is like a brand new platform. It, it provides new ways to reach new people, helps to promote the ministry, and it boosts your digital uh, marketing effort. And it can even help in terms of your keyword positioning uh, from, uh, from a search perspective. So let's talk about internet connected TV and uh, take a look at uh, the definition. Uh, it's a means to deliver digital content directly to the consumer through either smart TVs or internet connectable TV products. And I'll, I'll make a distinction between the two. What is the difference? Well, uh, essentially, a smart TV has a lot of that capability, has a Wi-Fi chip built in, has the capability to be, a, uh, and has some of this software already built into it, versus internet connectable, which are devices like a Apple TV box, a uh, Roku TV box, that you can plug into uh, an actual smart TV. So on a smart TV, a lot of that stuff's built in. Uh, and then, ver uh, so example would be Samsung has, uh, has some options. Even Roku now, uh, it, that, that platform and that, that software is now being built into some flat screen TVs. Versus internet connectable, uh, where you have things like Chromecast and uh, you've got Fire TV and Roku, uh, which are external boxes that you can hook up to literally any TV that's out there. And, and this is an example of a, of a Roku box and there you can get it either in this version or you can also get it as a USB stick that can, uh, that can, that can plug into your um, uh, into your TV and it directly into a uh, into a TV and uh, they range in price from I mean these Roku boxes you can get them at a Best Buy anywhere from like 60 60 bucks uh, the sticks sell for just under 50 bucks if you get the sticks uh, to their full their top of the line model is about 80 90 bucks uh, at a Best Buy. So they're easy uh, to get. They're simple to set up too. Um, they really just have you know, a power cable. Uh, you've got an HDMI cable that actually hooks it up to the TV. And then uh, you can either use wireless, or in this case, I've actually got it hooked uh, up today with a, a, actually a hardwired network connection. But most, of, most all of them have that wireless capability. So you get that in the box, and you also get a, uh, a remote and the remote allows you to navigate the channels and to set it up. Um, so that's an example of what, what these things look like. Um, so what are some of the benefits? Well, you can view video content either through applications, and a lot of uh, companies have made up their own Chan apps, uh, channels are really just apps. So when you think about it, um, when, you, when you have these boxes, essentially you're downloading little apps to it. The, the, the similar model that many of you fam are familiar with are the iPhone model, where you know, if, you wanna, uh, if you wanna download a new app, you go to the, uh, the channel store, in the Apple channel store, and you'll download an app to your iPhone, and then you can use it. Well, on internet connected TV, the channels are really just apps. 
apps. You go to the Roku TV store and you can find, there's free channels, there's pay channels. You download those onto that and then you have them accessible on your home screen. And they're like your channels. So the concept of a channel, it's really just an app. Uh, and so that's how that works on, on, um, uh, on Roku and, and it works on Fire TV and all the others. Similar concept. They all have these channel stores where you can download these uh, free or pay apps. And the apps usually are free to download, such as Netflix, YouTube, there's Napster, Hulu, Facebook, but many of them have subscription models. So like with Netflix, you can download the app and you can get into it, but then actually to, to watch any movies, you have to have a Netflix subscription. So they'll sell subscriptions. Uh, same thing with Hulu. Uh, Facebook, of course, is free. Uh, they allow you to sign in to get more features. And you can download new channels, games, news, and weather. These are some of the other things that are available. And there's literally uh, hundreds and hundreds of channels available. I mean, I, I remember when there were just a few uh, when we first started developing these, and now it's just amazing. And what's particularly exciting is I see a new church, a new, cha a new church channel, a new ministry channel, several of them a week get launched. So Roku probably is a few people know it, but there, there's a, 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 a lot of churches that have created, already created channels on there. So uh, take advantage of it. Um, if your ministry has the, the capability to do that, uh, create a channel to show your, uh, your, your video and your content. So it allows, uh, so Internet Connected TV allows your uh, your followers to access to your video content, helps to brand your ministry, and I think it's one of the best platforms to deliver uh, ministry broadcast or media content. Uh, it's just powerful, it's a very immersive experience. Um, so, you know, what is the, let's talk a little bit about the reach of internet connected TV and some statistics on growth. Um, so the average American, you know, is watching about five hours of, of TV per day. And by the way, I've got a um, I've got a sign up sheet going around. If you guys want copies of my Prezi, I'd be happy to uh, send you a copy. Um, if you want to send that along, uh, put your email address on. I'll, I can, you can get copies of this if you want it for your reference. So uh, TV ownership has increased. Uh, over 55% of people own three or more TVs. Uh, Roku has sold over 10 million uh, units as of August 2014 and is anticipated to surpass Dish Network in the next two years. I think this is particularly interesting because uh, you know Dish has uh, uh, Dish has about uh, at the time these statistics were done had about 12 million subscribers. So Roku is already has almost as many subscribers as Dish and it's growing very rapidly. And the Dishes and the DirecTV's are actually losing. Uh, a lot of people. And in fact, we're seeing this trend where millennials, uh, they're actually not getting cable. They're just getting a Roku box and they're watching all of their content via Netflix or YouTube. And so this is an important trend. So this is where people are going, which is another reason w uh, why we need to be there as a, as a ministry to show that content. Uh, Dish Network has 14 million subscribers and DirecTV has, uh, sorry, it's 14 million and DirecTV has 20, but Roku has been growing extremely quickly and so that's, uh, I think that's an important trend to be aware of. I like this, uh, this graphic because it just shows how many uh, internet uh, connected TV, or sorry, internet connected devices, so this is not just TVs but uh, phones and all sorts of uh, IP devices there are. So you've got world population, you know, connected devices uh, per person in 2003 was about uh, 0.08. Now we're at 1.84. I mean, we're going to get to the point where, you know, each, uh, there's going to be six internet connected devices for every person on the planet very soon. Part of those are going to be uh, internet connected TV. Here is the number of connected TV sets worldwide from 2010 to 2018. So you see that continuing to grow. So what's happening is, uh, you know, manufacturers that they've been manufacturing what you would call dumb TVs for a long time. But as time's going on, they're putting this technology into the into the televisions. So. The platform's growing, the capability is growing, so we need to be there to have the, the gospel message, to be able to, uh, to share that with people, so we can see this uh, trend continuing 
to grow. This is some material from uh, Roku that just shows a little bit about what they're doing. The number of streaming players, and that was from 2014. Uh, they had an interesting statistic, 10 million, the same number of bricks used to construct the Empire State Building. Um, they've got thousands of channels on there right now. They had uh, a statistic of how many billion hours are streamed on Roku players since the original launch. Uh, and then top 10, uh, where, you know, where the most people have uh, Roku. So Roku players are all in 50. Uh, 50 U.S. states, you might be surprised where they are. Uh, of course, Bay Area ranks as the number one, but some other areas are interesting as well. I think the overall trend is, particularly with millennials, is they're dumping cable and they're just using Roku or watching, uh, watching their video and their content online. Uh, 48 hours is the average hour stream per Roku player per month. So some interesting statistics, and then some more growth. Uh, statistics. Connected TV sets are expected to grow to 79, 759 million worldwide by 2018. The number of homes that watch online streaming will number 520 million from 40 countries, uh, a rise from 182 million in 2010. So almost a, a four to five fold increase. So not only in the United States, but around the world. It's estimated that online subscription service will rise from 67.8 million to 160.6 million by 2018. And again, statistics showing the growth of this platform, and this is why we need to pay attention to it. It's a good time to jump in. Uh, let's go on, let's see here. So how can your ministry use inter, uh, uh, internet connected TV? Well, by streaming live or archived sermons, for example, or events or obvious ways, uh, using it for ministry updates or to post uh, snippets that, that uh, give updates of what the ministry is doing. Providing educational sessions. Uh, a lot of Rokus are being used uh, for education. And so it's a great opportunity to use that to educate. Uh, getting the gospel to more people, having gospel and testimonials online. And then of course there's also sub a subscription content as well, uh, where you can create premium content for uh, those that, you know, that uh, maybe, the, uh, maybe access to an archive can be cre premium content. So you, uh, what some churches do is they'll, uh, they'll provide the last weekend's message available for free, but then if you want to access the archive that might be a premium content. So that might be how that works. Um, so it allows, uh, the benefit it allows people away from the church to join in. You know, it's, it's interesting that, um, some, uh, that it really extends the, um, the, the sanctuary in a virtual way. Some people have, have even seen uh, online and streaming of weekend messages as a much less expensive way of expanding their, uh, their facilities than to build just a bigger uh, sanctuary. Because you know, the bigger the sanctuary, it becomes more expensive. Well, it's easy to add additional seats uh, if you're streaming it live or you're doing it online. And it allows you to keep in touch with, uh, with people. Uh, if they're out of town, uh, I know one, one church we worked with that was in a, uh, a resort area, they lost half of their uh, congregation during uh, the summer season. They were in a ski resort area. And so they used the, uh, the streaming to be able to stay connected with their congregants that way. Um, Let's see, members can share messages. YouTube, Roku, Amazon Fire, Chromecast all allow live streams. And of course, uh, you can do archives, uh, archives as well. Uh, archives is probably the most common and then live, scre live streams, a little bit less common, but there's a lot of them that are, uh, that are doing it, particularly the uh, broadcasters. So um, I touched on some examples of subscriptions that are in the secular world, uh, Hulu, uh, Amazon, uh, Netflix, Redbox, Blockbuster, uh, MGo are a few of the examples where you can download the channel for free, but then to access the content, you have to have a subscription. And often the subscriptions, uh, you purchase the subscriptions usually on the website or they have another mechanism. Um, part of that is, and, and people have asked me, you know, can I do, ro can I do donations on Roku? Yes, you can, but I don't know that it, that's the best 
choice of platform. They have a built-in capability to do payments. Unfortunately, they take 30% of any transaction. So a lot of uh, organizations will uh, sell the subscription on another platform and then just give a code that you can enable the subscription, just because that's a little steep. <laughs> um, so uh, and some free subscription examples are Pandora, Vivo, and uh, Google. Uh, by Google, for example, if you log in, you can actually uh, go on your desktop, you can watch a video, and you can send it to the Roku player to play it. That's an example of how they've done that. So um, ministries on TV. So Internet Connected TV allows for ministries to utilize video content, expand their reach, and create a custom channel to play through everyone's favorite device, the TV. So next, I want to show some examples of what a Roku channel looks like. So when you first um, boot this up, uh, again, you plug this into your you know, HDMI, and then you go to your input. And instead of, you know, normally you'd be on TV, so you, know, you would just go to your HDMI input. Let me go and switch that over. So you go to your HDMI input, and then plug this thing in. It boots up. And uh, let me get back to the main screen. And this is the home screen that you see when you first boot up. Now, these are uh, channels. They're really just apps that I've already preloaded and, uh, and installed on this particular Roku. But you can, you can go to the, the place where you find new channels is you go to, the, uh, you go to streaming channels. And then this is like the Roku channel store. These are really just little apps that you download. And you can go through the various categories and you can see and download and install uh, new channels. Um, so they've got themes. These are like uh, background themes. They've got games, movies, and TVs. They have tons of, um, uh, tons of apps and, and channels that you can download. They've got you know, browsers. Uh, you can download YouTube. Uh, and others that I've already, there's got news and weather. So these are all the different categories. And then let's say you wanted to go, uh, let me go to the, they call it religious. And then let me go, you go over here and you can see some of the choices. So there's TBN, Daystar, and you know, you start scrolling down Joyce Myers, there's K-Love, CBN, God TV, uh, and there's over 300 already. Um, so just tons of, and some of them are churches, Saddleback Church, obviously a lo large local church, but there's also medium and small churches that have created their own uh, Roku channels. Um, let me see, Oak Hills Church, here's an example, uh, Randy Frazee. Um, so various churches have created their own Roku channels, and you can, uh, the way you install those, so let's say I wanted to, um, let me pick one to, Download. Let's say I wanted to do Ed Young TV, for example. You click OK, and then you just add the channel, and it adds it then to your home screen. And it, really, that's all there's to it. Uh, and then when you go back to your home screen, and it should, whoops, let me go back to my home. And then you can scroll down, and it should be at the bottom. There, there it is. And then you can go ahead, and, and you choose that with your remote, and you can go ahead and watch that. Um, I'm going to show some examples of Roku channels. This is Harvest with Greg Laurie. Um, so I've already downloaded that channel. Uh, Harvest, if um, most of you probably know who, who Greg Laurie is. If you don't, he's an evangelist. They have both church and they have their evangelistic events on here as well. So uh, plus he has a, a TV show. So you can watch. So this is a, an example of a simpler screen that you can implement in Roku. So you can watch Greg Laurie TV. You can watch Full Harvest Services. And then you can also watch archived Harvest Crusades, and then they also have a new beginning, which is the radio program. So you can listen just to the audio of that. So uh, for example, here they have archived the uh, uh, previous year's uh, uh, event. So, and they have the Friday, the Saturday, and the Sunday, and you can go ahead and, uh, and play that. And uh, the quality is great. Um, you know, it's, it somewhat depends on your internet connection. Uh, but they've got, you know, you've got good quality and, and it's as good as anything else. And then you can skip forward as well if you want to. Just by using the, the right arrow, you can skip forward where, let's say, I want to move into a different area. 
I can just fast forward it and they have another button here where you can do fast forward it more quickly and then choose OK. And then it's, it starts playing Don't it at that point. <laughs> So quality is great. Again, it's going to depend also on what, at what level it was encoded, whether it was encoded in HD or whatever. So it somewhat depends on that. So let's go. So that's an example of an archived one. Um, and here's an example of Saddleback Church. And I think they have a similar um, there seems to take a little bit longer to load. They have a, uh, and I'll, I'll explain the different screens that you can have as well. Uh, so they have the, the basic screen where you can watch now where they're always doing a, uh, they're, they're playing a, um, uh, they do it on a continuous loop. And then you can look at current series and past series and special events. So they've got the watch now. And let me click on resume. And, uh, and I think I've fast forwarded it into a, a, a particular point in the, uh, in the sermon where Rick is speaking here. Um, Change. God changes the verb and he says to you, go. Luke 7.50, Jesus said, your faith has saved you, now go. That's great Luke quality. It's very watchable. Any faith that doesn't lead us to go into action. With Let me show an example. Um, Life Today is uh, another Roku channel that we've developed. Uh, this is a, a, a daily Christian program. They have a little bit different uh, screen layout. Uh, let me show that one. Brandon Heath, I'll show this example. The quality on the intro is great, but I noticed they've encoded uh, the regular program they've encoded at a little bit lower resolution, but it's still very good. So this is, these are all examples of archived content. Now most, some of these, uh, the archived content, they're pulling it straight from the website, uh, encoded from the website. Uh, some of them are streaming them with um, Vimeo. Some of them are using a content uh, delivery network like Akamai to be able to stream them. So this has been out for, by the time this hits the air, so one of the considerations in developing a Roku channel is, you know, where is that, where is that content being streamed from? Um, are you going to stream it, you know, from, from content you already have on the website? Let me show you an example of live. Um, let me go here to, oops, go back here. TBN is an example. They have both archived and live feeds. So let me show you an example of that. So um, they, they have the ITBN, which is all the on-demand stuff. So for example, you can see programs, people, search, network, faith issues. They always archive. Their flagship show is Praise the Lord. And they I think they do one of those almost every day. And you can s usually see like the one from a day or so ago. Um, so if you missed it, uh, and you, they have a, uh, you, know, you can see who was on. Um, so uh, that's convenient, and then they also have access to the live, um, the live stream as well. Let me go back to, I want to show you the example of the live stream. <clears throat> so the live TV, here you can stream, and these are actually, um, uh, the way we set it up, we, we pull the signal from the satellite, we encode it, and then it actually goes out live. And so you can, they have many more channels than this, but you can get the main TBN channel, Juice and Lasse, uh, the church channel. So let me just show you an example of a live stream. So this is actually, if you were to, you know, watch it, the current live content. And this is the Juice channel, which is kind of like the Christian MTV. <clears throat> the encoding quality on this one is a little bit lower than the TBN. They're upgrading all of their feeds right now for this. So this is an example of what you would actually pick up if you, if you got the live channel. So let's see, I 
think I wanted to show you that. Um, those are some great examples of that. Uh, so you gotta kind of get a sense of what that, how that works and how that looks. So I've demoed TBN, and we took a look at the Roku channel for Greg Laurie, and we looked at Saddleback Churches, one, um, and we touched on life today. Um, and then also, let me show you the, whoops, the Roku for the Billy Graham one. And they also use the, uh, this um, uh, slide sorter as well. So you can, you can pluck, pick up the, uh, the classic Billy Graham sermons. You can also uh, see some of the TV specials. Uh, the My Hope program, for example. And it's come a long way. I remember when we first did these, the quality was kind of grainy, but with the pipe increasing and the resolution and how it's being set up increasing, it's pretty good. So anyway, you get, an idea, you get an idea of what that looks like. Let me also, I also wanted to touch on, let me go forward. Um, I also wanted to touch on, because some ministries say, well, I can't afford to you know, create a Roku channel. Well, at the very least, create a YouTube channel if you can't create a, uh, a, a Roku channel. So let me show you some examples, and I'm gonna touch on how you create a YouTube channel versus a Roku channel. So I wanted to demo um, some examples of, of YouTube channels as well. And on, on Roku, you actually can download a YouTube app and you can watch YouTube on Roku. So let me start first with an example, some of these Greg Laurie examples. So there's an actual channel that they've, that they've created, a Harvest Greg Laurie channel, and within that, they've posted various videos. So it's easy for you to create your own YouTube channel and to assemble all your videos in there. So if you're not gonna do a Roku channel, uh, uh, at least do a YouTube channel, because again, this is where you wanna be. So this is an example of, let's say I'll play, let's play one of these here. Uh, yeah, let's do this one here and you can see what the quality is like. So this is YouTube running on Roku. <laughs> And you can also fast forward through here as well. You can use the buttons because they've enabled the app to be able to do that. So for example, I wanted to fast forward, I can do that. Believing that you will speak to our hearts today. So we come to give our attention with intention. As you tell us in scripture, we should have ears to hear what you would say to us. So speak to us from your word. We've been asked now in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So there you go. And let me show you an example also of, let me go back to uh, the Billy Graham one. Let me go here. And show the Billy Graham channel. They've also created a, a YouTube channel as well. So here's an example, for example, of a quick video of Franklin, Go Franklin preaching the gospel. Jesus died and shed his blood and was buried and he took our sins to the grave. And then after three days, God said, that's enough. And he raised his son to life. Jesus Christ is alive. He's here tonight. So just an example of even short, even short videos like this can be very effective and they can help you in a, from a search perspective too. All right, so I've demonstrated Roku, I've demonstrated YouTube as well. So let's move on and talk about where you need to start. So, you know, there is a certain amount, there's strategy involved whenever you create a new media 
uh, channel. You want to be thinking about what is my audience, who am I trying to reach, what kind of videos do I want to uh, feature. So you want to start with vision, with goals, with strategy as well. You need to think through, uh, you know, YouTube is very simple because you're just uploading it to their servers, they're providing the, uh, the streaming capability. When you do a Roku channel, there's a little bit more thought that you might want to put into it. Where are you streaming it from? Is it What's the source? And to make sure that it's a uh, source that, um, that is going to deliver the video, particularly if you have a lot of viewers, uh, you want to be uh, cognizant of that. So vision, goals, and strategy are important. Um, and goals drive your strategy and vision. You know, we always say that you know, whenever, you, whenever you do any kind of a project, the kind of results you're going to get are going to vary tremendously if you don't take the first step of identifying your strategy and then properly implementing it and then putting in place the marketing to be able to grow what you're doing as well. Uh, so strategic planning cycle that, that we go through, whether we're developing a Roku channel or a YouTube channel, start first with your goals, where you want to go. What kind of outcomes do you want? Who, who are you trying to reach? What kind of a, what is your ministry's focus or goals? And that's going to determine uh, the kinds of, uh, of captions and text that you put in, because you want to be thinking about what is, what is the person who's going to be uh, watching it? What are they, what are you trying to reach and how do you want to get there? Strategies, measurements and targets, um, and then ultimately results. We work with ministries on how to create these channels to get maximum effect. Whether there's going to be, whether you're going to take donations, whether it's going to be primarily an outreach, an evangelistic outreach, those are all important factors to take into account when you're creating these kinds of channels. Um, and then how does it fit into your overall um, online strategy? Uh, a, a Roku channel and, a, and, and uh, placing YouTube videos can be an important part about th uh, of that. We like to think about the entire, uh, call it online ecosystem, because they really feed upon each other. You start, uh, uh, start at the beginning with your strategy goals and vision at the upper left. Um, we, uh, we go through a process of actually creating personas where we define, where we create profiles of the types of people that we're trying to reach. What are their interests? How do these video messages need to be structured in order to reach them in the best way? Um, that, from that, we generate two things, the kinds of keywords that we want to focus on uh, in, in describing the videos and even the content, and then action pathways, and those are, are really calls to action that we want someone who's watching the video to do. And we've got internet connected TV, then there's emails, websites, social media, mobile. All of that is leading to calls to action. And, and, that, the, and the ROI or return on investment could be a financial one or it could be a spiritual one as well. If the goal is, uh, is to get more people to make a commitment for Christ. Uh, tools we use to do that include A-B testing, which is a technique to be able to test uh, how well uh, various videos and, and calls to action are working. Um, so you need to be also thinking about, you know, what is the bigger picture here? How am I going to tie this into what we're doing in other parts of the ministry to make it absolutely the most effective? Uh, so we look at number of subscribers, uh, number of shares, uh, sometimes donations. Some ministries are, are very focused on that. Others are more, um, they're looking more at just commitments for Christ. How many commitments for Christ can we get? And then number of views. Those are all important measures. And sometimes it's good to put in place uh, goals of where you want to go and what you want to hit. Uh, so that you can actually move toward that goal and you can tweak things and uh, continually improve that. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the different channels and what are the steps needed to be able to set yourself up on them and to you know, stake your claim uh, on these new platforms. So let's touch first on YouTube. You know, going about creating a, uh, a YouTube channel, um, it's fairly straightforward. You, know, you can create your own channel, make sure you uh, change your privacy settings appropriately to make sure the public can see the videos you like and your favorites by default. Uh, you can then upload content. Uh, you can organize it. You want to be able to post regularly. And they don't have to be long snippets. Even short snippets work effectively. 30-second snippets um, can work effectively as well. 
for developing in Roku, uh, there's several considerations that you'll want to think about. First is the hosting considerations, particularly since you're delivering video content, you want to make sure that there's a great experience, uh, especially if you've got a channel that's going to be uh, accessed by a lot of uh, visitors. If it's, if, it's a small, um, if it's a small channel and there's not a lot of people, then it's probably fine even hosting it from a website. But if you've got thousands or tens of thousands of people uh, all trying to access the same video or the same feed, or if it's a live feed, you want to invest in something uh, more substantial than just trying to host it off of a website. You'll probably want to look at a, uh, a content delivery network which allows multiple users to be able to stream. If you don't do that, what's going to end up happening is like three or five or ten users are going to be able to watch it and all the rest are going to get like connect errors because the, 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 the infrastructure can't handle that many uh, concurrent connections. So that's particularly relevant if you're doing live streams. On archived, it's, it's less important because often you're not going to have that many people watching the same video at the same time. So it's less of an issue, but particularly for live uh, streaming. And some of, the, uh, some, of the consider some of the ones to look at are DreamHost, Cashfly, Amazon Cloud, Rackspace, and Akamai all have services uh, for both live and for streamed that can provide a, uh, a, a better experience. Um, Vimeo is another one that, uh, um, that people are using as well, although that, that's the quality on Vimeo is a little bit lower. Um, and so here's some examples of, uh, you know, I mentioned there's over 300 plus channels already in the uh, religious category growing every day, so stake your claim. Create your Roku channel. Um, you know, you build out your channel screen, uh, you storyboard the screens out. The programming is done in a language called BrightScript, which is um, kind of VB, classic VB-ish um, uh, or ASP-ish. Uh, it's very similar to that. And you can, basically you develop it on a PC or a Mac and then you package your files up. You upload it to, into test mode on the Roku and then you can test your channel. Once you're uh, finished testing, then you can actually uh, submit it to Roku and they test it because they want to make sure that the, uh, so that you go through an approval process with Roku. And then they post it on the channel store. So those are the, at a high level, the different steps you go through. So these are examples of some of the uh, screens that, uh, some of the, the screens that you can customize in Roku. They've got what's called a grid screen. They also have uh, a keyboard screen as well uh, for doing entry and you can actually do the data. Or it's, it's a little bit clunky. Um, I mean, it does work, but uh, you know, Roku is not probably a platform where you want to do a lot of data entry. Um, so you want to keep it simple. It's usually for searches or for entering simple things. Um, let's see, go on to the next one. You've got a, uh, a message screen that's available as well, uh, a list screen, and a paragraph screen as well. So these are some of the, some of the uh, and then poster screens. This one's used a lot. I think I showed you an example. The Harvest one looked like this and the Saddleback one. And this is a way to show access to different content. And so the final steps to creating your Roku channel, um, you know, you put your, uh, you basically put your Roku box into what's called the development or test mode. You then upload the channel through a browser. You go through your, uh, uh, your testing process. Um, you can actually generate a channel code so that other Roku users can connect to that and, and you go, go through the, the testing process so others can try it out and test it. Um, Roku has a, uh, a pretty decent support forum for debugging assistance, so you can take advantage of that. Once it's all debugged, then you package it up, uh, you submit it to Roku, they review it and provide feedback, and then you make your changes. Uh, if it's approved, then it'll get published in the, the Roku channel store where, uh, where the general public can then access it. Then what you have to do is you have to begin your marketing program to publicize your channel. I mean, it's great if you can you know, get it in the channel store, but you need to also have a marketing plan, just like anything else. I mean, even uh, you know, if you create a website, you've got to market that as well. 
So Yahoo TV, that one has kind of dropped in popularity in the last few years. It used to be for a while, or in the early days, it was Roku and Yahoo TV were some of the tops. Um, I don't see as much. I mean, Yahoo TV is being implemented on, on uh, I think, Sony or one of the, I'm not sure if it's Sony, but, but some of them have actually uh, built some of the Yahoo TV stuff into their uh, into the panels themselves, but it's not as popular uh, a platform. The steps to creating it are similar to Roku, it's JavaScript based, and then they have an emulator that you can use for testing your channel. And they have a similar submission process where you upload it to their what they call their channel store. Amazon Fire TV has, uh, they've gotten a lot of attention in the last year or so. They did a big campaign last year uh, when they launched. Um, their um, box is, has a much more powerful chip in it than even Roku does. Uh, but at this point, they have, there's very, very few channels on Amazon TV. Uh, you either have to create actually an, a kind of an Android application, like if you were to, you know, they, they've got the Android apps that you can download to your phone. You actually have to create an Android app. They just recently enabled uh, a simpler way to create a Fire channel where you can create an HTML5, basically a web-based app, and it displays in an and in Android web view. So that makes it a little bit easier to create a channel. It doesn't, um, the channels that are developed this way are a little bit simpler than the ones that, uh, or, or a little bit more basic than the ones that if you, if you, uh, uh, actually develop an Android app. So you create, if you do go that path, you develop the Android app, um, you uh, then create a develop, you go through a developer account, you go through an app submission process, and then it gets published in the Amazon Fire TV store. Again, this one is, I don't know where this, you know, if, if this is gonna be the next hot platform, I'm not sure. They don't have a lot of channels yet, other than, you know, they got Netflix and some of the basic ones on there. But uh, this one, uh, there's a lot of attention here because it's, um, uh, it's new. Uh, they implemented a search where you can do it with your voice as opposed to having to, to type it in. And so it's a little gimmicky, but um, who knows? I mean, it might take off as well. Uh, Google TV, you know, Google has had now two fails, I think, in trying to launch uh, this platform. They keep trying, though. Um, you know, they've, they, uh, they do have Chromecast, which works reasonably well. Um, they've, the, the Google TV has been implemented on, by a number of different uh, flat panel TV manufacturers from Samsung to LG and Sony. Um, the only problem and, and why, why we're not huge fans is that the way Samsung implemented Google TV was just a little bit different from the way that LG did, which was just a little bit different from Sony Bravia. So what we found was when we developed a, an app and we tested it on Samsung, we said, hey, great, we're done. Unfortunately, then we tested it on LG and realized, oh, it doesn't work on LG. We had to make tweaks to it. So it's kind of a nightmare for developers because you've got to like test it on every single platform instead of saying, well, I just want to develop it once and then instead of having to test it on it, it'd be like you know having to create a, an Android app and then having to test it on every single Android phone out there. That's kind of a pain. So that platform is, is a little bit you know, sketchy right now. So um, as a result, we haven't you know, done a ton of development in that just because of the challenges with that. Um, you create a developer account. Uh, you, there's, they have a, an emulator that allows you to, to emulate it on a PC to test it. And then you pa publish the app on the Google Play Store. And they have, you can either do an app or you can do uh, kind of a, an HTML5 app as well, a simpler one. So uh, now that you have the channels, how do you continue down the path to success? So uh, what are some ways you can promote your channel? Well, so let's touch on promoting your, uh, your Roku TV or your, uh, your channel. So you can add annotations with links, and this is in, inside YouTube. Um, when you upload your videos, you can actually place uh, like annotations within the video itself. Again, you know, be tasteful about this. One thing I hate is when I go to YouTube and like there's 
just all these annotations in there. Uh, use, them, use them in a smart way. Uh, but it is a great capability to add links or things that as the video plays, these things can pop up. And so used in a, in a, uh, you know, in a smart way that can be very effective. So take advantage of that capability. Uh, create a Google Plus page and promote your video that way. So this is particularly relevant if you're creating a, uh, a YouTube channel. You can share videos through Hangouts. So create a, a, a Google Plus uh, page, uh, have links or post your video there. That's a great way of, uh, of ultimately uh, uh, playing your video, but also getting people over to your YouTube channel. Um, so that so Google Plus is a great way of promoting that, and you can also on your whether it's on Facebook or on um, on YouTube, you can also promote a Roku channel on that platform as well, where you can cross brand your YouTube channel on other social media platforms. So this is an example, a Facebook example that links to a video and and promotes as well um, some TVN stuff. Uh, run different ads within YouTube. You know, you have the capability, of course, to stream ads. Um, you can actually put place ads within the YouTube stream if you want. You can use search ads to drive people to watch a uh, uh, watch an ad or or to an ad for a particular channel to promote that channel. And you can use display ads as well. And this is an example of a display ad within uh, YouTube. So let's zoom into that. I think we can have. So of course, here's the YouTube stream ads. Then we have the search ads themselves. And then you have the ability within YouTube to do display ads as well. So let's uh, talk about some more options for promoting your YouTube channel. Um, you can do a viral campaign, sometimes creating a, uh, a simple video that, that promotes the channel and then posting that. You can, you can um, upload transcripts in YouTube and that's something that you might want to do particularly for longer pieces of media because it can get picked up then by the uh, by their their search engine algorithm so if you can if you get a transcript let's say for a half hour program to upload those or even if you've got a short video putting the transcript in of what the people said is can help you in terms of the search so that's something you might want to consider um, creating promotional campaigns uh, with various incentives and, and you can get creative about that to, to promote a channel or uh, promote the ministry. Um, SEM campaigns with a video focus. Um, SEM stands for search engine marketing. So you can do, uh, on the search engines, you can do uh, uh, campaigns that, that link to videos or that promote a, uh, a message. Um, you can do an ad roll retargeting campaigns for selected videos. Um, the way uh, retargeting campaigns work is if you visit a website and what it does is it then can show ads that are related. So for example, if somebody visits your website, I don't know if you've seen that, you, know, you visited like Home Depot or whatever and then it seems like wherever you go, you see examples or, or you go to Best Buy, you looked at let's say a, a TV and then everywhere you go, <laughs> it seems like they're posting ads for that particular TV. That's called retargeting. Targeting. So you can use that technique as well. Um, you can use uh, create subtitles and closed captions in your videos. Um, this is an example of, uh, of what that would look like in YouTube. Let's see. And let's see, leveraging featured channels. Um, so uh, you can create, within your channel, you can create other or links to other featured channels. So this is an example of how Joel Osteen ministry features, and they do it back and forth too. From Lakewood Church, you can get to Joel Osteen, and then there's Elisa Osteen. So you can cross promote that way as well. Um, interaction with the YouTube community, of course, posting and, uh, and regularly uh, engaging in, in dialogue and, and in, uh, in conversation about a particular video. How to promote Roku or other ICTV channels. Um, the best way is through cross-channel promotion. So you can promote it in your Facebook stream, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, I've seen it in magazine ads, TV commercials, banners at events, brochures, t-shirts, 
decals, business cards, product packaging, put your Roku uh, channel on there or your YouTube channel. Um, an SEO campaign, you can do pay-per-click campaigns, email campaigns and newsletters and affiliate site ads as well. So conclusion. So um, why you know why is this important? I think it's I believe it's important because it's a new it's a new platform. It's growing. More people are purchasing these uh, flat panel TVs that either have that capability built in or can easily be added. And by the way, these are backward compatible. So if you've got a you know a non HDMI TV, you can have like the RGB connectors as well. That's a, a, certainly a benefit of Roku. So the argument is the, the platform's growing, more people are accessing it. Uh, these, these platforms are growing very rapidly. Uh, you want to be there. You want to have your content and your ministry on that platform so that people can actually get the gospel message. So it adds credibility. Um, it can add a new donation source, a, a way of creating premium subscriptions. It's less expensive than cable or satellite. I think the, one of the bigger, uh, biggest arguments is that millennials are not getting cable. And if you want to reach millennials, that's where you've got to be. Uh, so that's another reason to create that. It promotes the ministry, reaches new audiences, um, and it can boost your digital marketing efforts. Um, it can help you with your keyword positioning. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.